Okay, so welcome back to the second video on uh, single photon emission uh, computed tomography spect. Uh, so we discussed the uh, single photon emission reaction uh, that uh, 99 tech M technetium uh, does in order to return to the normal 99 technetium. Right, uh, now what we can do is we can use this to try and image whatever, uh, certain parts of the body uh, or certain facets of physiology and I hope what I mean by that will become apparent when I give you a specific example. So basically we can attach technetium to some molecule that, or some protein that is usually found in the body and an example of one that is commonly used is a protein known as annexin 5. So, let's attach our technetium, 99M technetium. So we've attached this 99M technetium to our protein, annexin 5. Okay, right. Now what we do is we put this annexin 5 into our patients. So we put it into the blood. Now, why is this important? Well, basically, well, to understand why we're doing this, we need to have a bit of knowledge of apoptosis and what happens to cells when they undergo apoptosis. So let's say this is a cell here, and it's undergoing apoptosis. Well, actually, let's firstly have it not undergoing apoptosis. So I'm going to draw two lines here to demonstrate the two, um, the two leaflets of the phospholipid bilayer. So the phospholipid bilayer is made up of uh, a double membrane, basically. It's made up of two layers of phospholipids. So you have this outer layer, or this outer leaflet. These are the, um, these are the technical names for them. This is the outer leaflet of the phospholipid by there. And this inner one is known as the inner leaflet. Okay, inner leaflet. So uh, just to highlight that a bit more, basically uh, the structure of the phospholipid by there is that you have phospholipids making up the outer leaflet here. So these are phospholipids all lined up with one another. And then making up the inner leaflet, you have phospholipids facing the opposite way, basically, so that their uh, hydrophobic tails all uh, are all sort of facing one another. And the polar heads are either facing the cytoplasm, in the case of the inner leaflet, or are facing the extracellular fluid, in the case of the outer, uh, the outer leaflet. So this is the extracellular fluid. Right, and obviously the extracellular fluid and the cytoplasm will have water in, so the polar heads interact more favourably there. So this here is the outer leaflet, and this here is the inner leaflet. Well, basically, there is a certain molecule that you find in the inner leaflet of um, the phospholipid bilayer, and that molecule is known as uh, phosphatidyl uh, serine. Phosphatidyl Serine, and I'll just show you briefly the structure of phosphatidyl serine. Okay, so phosphatidyl means this prefix prefix phosphatidyl means phospholipid, and I'm going to show you the basic structure of what a phospholipid is. So, phospholipids are made up of um, a glycerol molecule, which is a free carbon molecule with free hydroxyl groups. So. Each of the carbons has basically a hydroxyl group on. Now, I've only drawn the oxygens of the hydroxyl groups because in phosphatidyl serine, all of the hydroxyl groups of glycerine, glycerol, are going to be um, are going to be bound to things, so they're not going to have their hydrogens on anymore. Uh, but in the raw glycerol, of course, they would have their um, hydrogens on. So this basically is the glycerol molecule here. And then what happens, to turn it into a phospholipid, we have these two tails here. And basically what those are, are they are the um, hydrocarbon tails of long-chain carboxylic acids. So you esterify long-chain carboxylic acids to two of these hydroxyl groups. So these groups here are long-chain carboxylic acids. So when I put R and R prime here, those are meant to represent huge, great tails of carbon, bonded to carbon, bonded to carbon. And basically, they could be very, very saturated, like palmitic acid or steric acid, or they could be more unsaturated. They could have double bonds and whatnot. But they're long aliphatic chain tails, which means um, that, that they're basically carbon bonded to it a lot, and then a lot of hydrogens off them. And uh, those two groups are what are known as long chain carboxylic acids or fatty acids. Okay, so when people talk about 
uh, you know, you're eating too much fat or you're eating too much saturated fat, it means you're eating too much of these things. So these are long chain carboxylic acids. Okay, so I'll just squeeze that in there, carboxylic acids. Or fatty acids is their more common name. Uh, chemists will, are trying to have them, uh, are trying to get biochemists to call them long chain carboxylic acids, but everyone still calls them fatty acids. Fatty acids. Okay, right. Uh, so, um, these fatty acids have become, have been ester linked to the hydroxyl groups of this glycerol molecule here. So, this is glycerol here. Okay, and when you bind uh, glycerol to two carboxylic acids like this, two long chain carboxylic acids, what you now have is something known as a diacyl glyceride. So this is glycerol, and the whole thing, the pink bit and the orange bits together, are now called a diacyl glyceride, or DAG for short. So the short is DAG. Right, but that's not a phosphate lipid yet. Uh, to turn it into a phospholipid, we have to give it this polar head. We've got the two uh, hydrophobic tails now, but we have to give it a polar head. And to give it a polar head, what we do is we bind this final hydroxyl group here to a phosphate group, so O minus, and then it would have a hydroxyl group in here if it was just a normal phospholipid. So this almost, this, this now is a normal phosphate lipid, phospholipid if I just put a hydrogen there. But we are trying to draw phosphatidylserine, so there's going to be something bonded to here, namely a serine. So this little group in here is the phosphate group, and now the orange with the pink with the green is a phosphate lipid, and that's what this entire phosphatidyl prefix means. It means this entire structure here. So this is a phosphate group. Okay, so we've now got a phospholipid, or we've got the phosphatidyl group, if you like. So this entire thing is the phosphatidyl group. So I'll put that down here. Phosphatidyl group. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to bind it to serine. Now, serine is an amino acid with a hydroxyl group on it. So basically, we bind this hydroxyl group to the hydroxyl group of serine. So, what you now have is here is the R group of serine, and here is the normal amino acid structure of serine. So here's the amino terminus, and here's the carboxyl terminus. So this basically is serine here. Serine would usually have a hydroxyl group off this carbon here, but basically it's combined with the hydroxyl group of the phosphate group, and water's come off, and they form that nice bond there. Okay, what colour shall I highlight the serine in? I'll do it in blue. So this is serine. So this is this bit here, serine. Right, so now this whole molecule is phosphatidylserine. So you can see that very much so it's just a phospholipid with a tiny little bit added onto this head, basically. So that's what phosphatidylserine is. So you find these molecules in the phospholipid bi there, and specifically you find them on the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bi there. Okay, now when the cell starts undergoing apoptosis, what happens is that phosphatidylserine starts leaving the inner leaflet and going into the outer leaflet. So in a normal healthy cell, there is no phosphatidylserine in the outer leaflet. It's only in the inner leaflet. When apoptosis starts happening, you move phosphatidylserine into the, alpha, uh, into the outer leaflet. So we're going to get phosphatidylserine molecules in the outer leaflet. Now what happens is a nexin 5 binds to those phosphatidylserines. So here is our draw, a nexin 5 binding to our, phospholipid, uh, our phosphatidylserine. Okay, so the idea is that if we tag a nexin 5 with 99M technetium, then it will localize to places in the human body where apoptosis is happening because it will bind to these phosphatidylserines and then you'll have technetium 99M or 99M technetium localized at the places where ap apoptosis is happening. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.